Join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. Good evening. Welcome to another evening of studying God's Word together. I am Dr. Chucks Ugohe here. Um, I'm doing episode 272 tonight. Uh, we have been sharing on the goodness of God, understanding the goodness of God. And um, we are on the part six of this contemplation titled, The Goodness of God Makes Him My Helper. The Goodness of God Makes Him My Helper. Uh, today is part six. Now, now we have said that our God is an absolutely good God. He also is infinitely strong. We, on the other hand, because of our flesh, because of our frailty as humans, we need his help. We are not infinitely strong. We are not infinitely, you know, uh, uh, empowered in our flesh, in ourselves. So we need his help because we are limited, uh, you know, once we, we are born in the, in, into the human race, we are limited. There's limitations that come upon us just for being human. So because of those limitations, we need the help of God. And his goodness, his character, the love that he has for us, because we, we are the object of his love. I need to repeat that. Man is the object of God's love. God loves man so much that his heart of love makes him reach out to us with whatever help we need to overcome whatever limitations living on this earth imposes on us or, or, or uh, uh, burdens, you know, loads on us. So, so man needs the help of God. Man needs the help of God. And now his goodness makes him help man. There is never anybody who is in trouble that God doesn't send help for his children, all of his children. His heart of kindness, his heart of love makes him predisposed to help you when you are in trouble, to help you when you're facing limitations, to help you when you're facing constraints that comes upon you because you wear flesh, because you are a human being, you know, going around with an earth suit. The Bible says he is a very present help in a time of trouble. Why does he make himself a very present help in time of need? Some version of the Bible say, a very present help in the time of need. That's Psalm 46 verse 1. Why does he say that? Because his goodness makes him predisposed to help you. So, so whenever you meet constraints or limitations or problems or challenges because of our existence in the, in, in the earth, in the, in, the, in the body, because of our uh, sojourn in the body, he is available to help. Now, we, we have already identified that, and we're saying, you know, many times we, children of God, we are crying for help, and help doesn't seem to be coming. Help sometimes seems to be delayed. What causes that? Because if his word says he's a very present help in a time of trouble, and now I am in trouble, but I'm not seeing the help, is, is God lying? He, but he can't be lying. His word does, you know, he doesn't lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. So he doesn't lie. So why am I not seeing the help? So if he doesn't lie, when his word says he's a very present help in a time of trouble, in a time of need, whatever the need is, whether it's a financial need or a health need or a emotional need or psychological need or, you know, protection need, I don't know what the need is, but whatever the need is, he is very present to supply that need to help. So why am I not seeing the help when I need it? And we identified that it is fear. The, the fear embedded in our subconscious mind blocks the help from manifesting. And what is the fear? The fear that God will not come through. The mistrust of God that came from Adam. When Adam fell in the garden, he fell, he, the fall of Adam was occasioned by a mistrust of God. Adam believed that God is not good. And because that was a lie that Satan sold to him, that God is not good. And the moment he accepted it, that God is not good, a distrust of God came through. And that manifested as fear. Fear is 
nothing but the emotion that, that a distrust of God produces in us. <laughs> yeah, a distrust of God produces an emotion called fear. So, so that distrust of God is a problem because now it blocks the help. Because the Bible says that, that, that it is impossible to engage God. It's impossible to deal with God. He said, he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, of those who wait for him, of those who hope in him, of those who trust in him. He will reward every act of faith. But now, if there is a fear that he will not come true, yet he has come true, but that fear serves as a block. That fear serves as an obstacle, hindering that help from manifesting. So, so this is the problem. There is a spiritual dimension where help is abundant, where help God shows up, where God is always there. Jesus said, be of good cheer. In, in, in this world, you will have tribulation. John 16, 33. In this world, you will have troubles. In this world, you will have challenges. But be of good cheer. I have overcome that world. I have overcome it. So if you have good cheer, in other words, if you rejoice, if, you're, if you are in a positive state of emotion toward, uh, regarding my help, you will see the victory that I have already secured for you in that situation. He said you will have challenges in this world, but be of good cheer. That is the, what we're dealing with. How do I move from being anxious to being of good cheer? How do I move from being worried that help will not come to being good cheer, that, you know, being delighted, that's what it means to have good cheer, to be of a positive emotion, to know that help has come already. Because it requires good cheer to draw down that help, to break down that barrier, to break down that wall that fear had created. Listen, this is what we are dealing with now. We are trying to understand it. How do I erode that wall? Because that world is not created by God. God didn't create that world that is blocking his help. God is desirous of helping you. God really is intent on helping you. He wants to help you. But that wall is standing in the way. And can I make an announcement tonight? He also wants to bring that wall down so that you can experience his help every time you need it. Hallelujah. So that you can experience his help every time you need it. So once that wall goes down permanently in your life, which is where every believer wants to be, where you trust in the goodness of God absolutely. You trust in the goodness of God absolutely that every time a limitation or a challenge or an adversity or a problem or a tribulation or an attack shows up, you move into good cheer, knowing that help will pull from the presence of God. We are talking about how do we pull down that wall? How do we pull down that wall of fear, that wall of unbelief? How do we get it down? How do we bring it to the floor so that we can enjoy the help that comes readily and freely from our Father? Let me say it again. The Father loves you. You are the object of his love. At all times, 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week, 365 days a year, or 366 days a year. Every second of every day, you are the object of his love. And because of how much he loves you, he always wants to help you. Always. See, any other teaching is a lie. Any other teaching that God is withholding anything from you is what? A bloody lie. He doesn't withhold anything from them that walk uprightly. He said so in his word. His love is so passionately towards you. He loves and he gives. For God so loved the world and he gave. He loves and he gives. So he is so passionately wanting to help you, wanting to pour out help for you and give you help. What is stopping the help from coming is not him. It's not him. Any other theology is wrong and is false. It's not him. It is your fear that creates the barrier. It is the, the mistrust. That mistrust that came from Adam that creates the block. That is what is blocking the help of God from manifesting. So the realm of the spirit is rich with God's help, is rich with God's resources, is rich with God's compassion towards you. The realm of the natural is arid of his help. 
there is a separation. That separation, the, the, the wall creating that separation is what we want to bring down permanently so that we can be a generation of people who always draw the help of God, who always draw the help of God, who always experience the help of God. Every time a limitation, oh, Rabaka, I am so excited. Every time a limitation arises, an attack arises, an adversity arises, a demon makes, makes some noise. It doesn't matter what it is. The help of God comes through immediately and delivers you. Listen to me. Everybody who walked with God in the word of God and drew the help of God, they knew this truth that I'm teaching today. They knew it. I've been teaching it now for the last five episodes. Today is the fifth, sixth one. They knew this truth deeply within them that God is their helper. The, 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 the psalmist says, I look to the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I look, I always have to look to the mountain and my help comes from there. Anybody who walk with God knows how to look to that mountain and draw help. They look. Bible says we look to him and our faces were brightened. Our faces were radiant and we were not ashamed. I declare you will never be ashamed. I declare you will never be ashamed because he is helping you. So as Isaiah chapter 50 says, because he helps me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I need to read that. I need to read that. Because he helps me, I have set my face like a flint. <laughs> and I know that I will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. For Isaiah 50 verse 7. For the Lord God will help me. Say it, say it. For the Lord God will help me. Say it again. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, can you see that? Because I am sure that he will help me. Because I am sure that I will not be disgraced. Meaning that the situation will not defeat me. Meaning that the opposition will not flaw me. Meaning that the devil will not have the last say. Meaning that the devil will not rejoice over me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. I have set my face like a flint. Set my face on what? Set my face on the mountain. Set my face on him. He is my reward. He is my portion. He is my helper. I set my face like a flint on him. And I know I will not be ashamed. Listen to me. As long as your face is locked in on the face of God, you will never be put to shame. Ah, yeah, yeah. You will never be put to shame. This is what God wants us to learn because to learn how to put our face on him and then open the floodgates, open that barrier between the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. And so the help of God flows through. The help of God flows through. Whatever you need, you have unlimited angelic assistance. You have unlimited angelic supply. You have unlimited angelic protection and defense. You have angelic, unlimited angelic ministry because the wall is broken down. That wall is created by fear and ignorance. And we are bringing it down today in your life in the name of Jesus. So you will not be ashamed. Now, now listen to this. We, 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 we are understanding this that I am the object of God's love. I am the object of his, his love. So he is always eager to help me. He is always ready to help me because his love for me is superior. And at all times, he wants to help me. He's never withholding anything. He's not withholding anything. What needs to go down is what is stopping what he has ordained, what he's finished. He already finished it. So he's not, he's finished it. <laughs> when it comes to me, my matter, it's settled. Jesus is dead on the cross. Ay, 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 ay. I'm not even sure how people read their Bible and say, God withholds things. God keeps some things to test you. No, 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 that's not true. The Bible says, if he <laughs> that did not spare his son, hey, he, he that did not spare his son, Romans chapter 8 verse 32, he that did not spare his son, but gave him, how will he not with him freely give us all things? He has already given his son, meaning he has freely given you all things. Don't believe that lie that says uh, God is holding something back from you so that he can train you. So, no, 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 no. He is holding nothing back. Something is stopping it from coming through. And what is that thing? Is the fear, is the doubt. 
on his goodness is deeply is deeply buried in your subconscious and we are trying to learn how do we uproot it and take that wall down so that the wall is permanently down the wall is permanently down then there is an unceasing stream or river of the goodness of god flowing into your life the unceasing flow of the goodness of god into your life it's flowing as healing. It's flowing as provision. It's flowing as joy and peace. It's flowing as progress. It's flowing as angelic assistance. Unlimited flow of the goodness of God. Let me ask you a question. Did God ever withhold anything from his son Jesus? No. No. And the Bible says, as the father loved the son, so he has also loved us. The same love with which he loved Jesus is what he loves me with. So if he did not withhold anything from Jesus, he's not withholding anything from me. In fact, he's given Jesus to die for me is proof that he has given me everything. So we are bringing down the wall, which is our unbelief, which is our fear of, about his goodness, our trust in him. That his goodness is infinite towards us. His goodness is without reservation towards us. When we get that... That wall goes down permanently. I prophesy in your life, that damn wall goes down permanently. And the goodness of God begins to flow unceasingly, unhindered, unfettered. The help of God in every situation, 24 hours a day, you are having help pro from heaven. 24 hours a day, you are having angels ascending and descending, pouring, bringing help, bringing victory, bringing answers, bringing healing, bringing deliverance, bringing provision every time. Hallelujah. Because your faith in the goodness of God is solid. It's so solid. Your faith in the goodness of God is absolutely grounded. So help comes. Help comes. If you cry once, he answers seven times. <laughs> Before you even cry, he has answered. Why? Because you trust him. Your faith in his goodness pulls that help all the time. This is where every believer wants to go to. Can I make an announcement to the body of Christ? God is raising an army that believe in his goodness and draw down his help every time they need it. That before we call, he's already answered. Why? Because he already answered before you called. He knew where you were going to call and he already made the provision. So as you are calling, the answer is already on ground. I declare to you instant answers. I declare to you instant manifestations in the name of Jesus. So, hear this. We explained yesterday that meditating on the goodness of God, meditating on his love, meditating on his works is what it is that eventually uproots that fear, uproots that mis mistrust, that, that thing we inherited from Adam, that makes us suspect God, that makes us think that God has ulterior motives or God is reluctant or God is not, you know, so keen or God is withholding something. That thing that makes us doubt his love. <laughs> the Bible says perfect love cast out all fear. Perfect love cast out all fear. When our love for God is perfect because we have received his love unconditionally, that perfect love cast out that wall of fear and once that wall is cast down and broken goodness flows like a river i prophesy to you a life where the goodness of god flows into your life like a river you see his help every time you see his help to bring provision to bring supply to bring ah to turn water into wine to multiply bread and feed thousands of people we see his help coming to to defend you from untimely death to defend you from the assault of the enemy to heal your body hey yeah 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 didn't you read in the bible in psalm 103 he says the benefits the benefit of you working with God one of them is that he heals all your diseases he redeems your life from destruction Satan cannot inflict wounds and pain on you <laughs> when you understand the truth of the goodness because you are defended the Bible says <laughs> he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways to protect you in all your ways you will not dash your foot against the stone a thousand shall fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it will never come near you because the Lord is your helper 
Hallelujah. Somebody scream, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. He's my helper in the morning. He's my helper in the afternoon. He's my helper in the evening. Hallelujah. So, it's meditating on his goodness that eventually, speaking, speaking the word of God, the truth of God's goodness out of your mouth, and meditating on his goodness, that is what causes that fear, that mistrust, that doubt that is buried inside of your subconscious mind to be uprooted and to be displaced and the wall go down and then the river begins to flow unhindered. The river of God's help begins to flow unfettered. The river of God's goodness and kindness begins to flow. I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know what you are expecting from God. Maybe a marriage partner, maybe finances, maybe progress, maybe a baby, maybe a healing. I don't know from a congenital condition or an affliction in your body. I don't care what it is. <laughs> but God has anointed Jesus Christ of, the, of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And he's still in the business of walking around and doing good and healing them that are oppressed of the devil. For God is with him. Healing has come for you in the name of Jesus. Deliverance has come for you. That breakthrough in marriage, whatever it is you're believing for, has come through. Why? Because that wall has gone down. You meditate on his goodness. You continue to meditate on his goodness. Meditate on his goodness. Meditate on his goodness. Look at this scripture. Psalm 119, verse 68. Psalm 119, verse 68. Let me show you something. Psalm 119, verse 68. His word says, You are good, and you do good. You are good, and you do good. All the actions of God are done from his well of goodness. God is so good that nothing else but good comes from him. Bible says in him is light and there is no darkness at all. So all that proceeds from God are good works or good actions. Towards you, his child, goodness pours. You are his child. He pours goodness towards you because he loves you. You got to get that. You are good and you do good. Teach me your status. So when I begin to meditate on his goodness and meditate on his works, this is how when I contemplate on the good that he has done and I keep reminding myself and meditating deeply on his goodness, eventually the meditation of his, on his goodness will go to the root where the lies that God is no good are deposited and, and where they are anchored and uproots them. So my job is to constantly meditate on God's goodness. Has God been good to you before? Meditate on it. Keep, keep your mind on it. Satan wants you to think about the things that didn't go right, the things that have not happened. And now you are, you are being drawn to be contemplated. No, no, no. Meditate on his goodness. Meditate on his goodness. How did David get rid of Goliath? How did David draw the help of God at the confrontation with Goliath? How did he do it? He meditated on God's previous goodness. When I was looking after my father's sheep, a lion came. God helped me. I defeated the lion. I delivered the sheep. And when I tried to deliver the sheep, the lion turned on me. I grabbed the lion. I slew the lion. And I got the victory. I saw the goodness of God. After that, a bear came. The same thing. God gave me strength. I fought the bear. I tore the bear into pieces by the help of God. I delivered, I delivered the victory that God brought to me by his help. And I had the victory. In these two occasions, I have seen the victory of God. And because of the, the, this is meditation. He was meditating on God's works in his life. He was meditating on the things that God had done before now. As he meditated on it, strength came to confront Goliath. Hey, you giant. Of, of, of the uncircumcised Philistines. The same way God delivered me and I saw his works in the past. Hey, the same way I'm going to give victory over you today. <laughs> the same way I'm going to get victory over you today. Can you see? Meditating on the previous be, um, blessings of God and the victories of God is what prepared him and equipped him to believe God for help to come. And guess what? The help came. He was not put to shame. He confronted Goliath with no weapon except the sling, a toy that he uses to play when he's looking after his father's sheep. That's all he had. And as he used it, 
he brought that lion, um, the, that Goliath down, and victory was brought. So I want you to know this. Meditation, meditation in the works of God is what gives us the victory. Look at this psalm. I think that may be my last one for tonight. Psalm 77 verse 12. Psalm 77 verse 12. He says, I will also meditate on all your work. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Why don't you borrow a, this principle from, from the psalmist? Meditate on the things that God had done. The last time you were in a, in a fix, God sent you help. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's only one time it happens. Stay with that one time. Focus on it. Go over it in your mind over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. Uh, you saw victory uh, with, with that battle and you won. You got, you got healing. Meditate on that healing. Meditate on that healing. You saw the provision. Meditate on that provision. Keep going through it on your mind over and over again. He says, I will meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Celebrate the goodness of God. Celebrate that victory. Celebrate it. Talk about it. Everybody who cares to hear must hear what God has done for you. Everybody who has an ear must hear. Talk about it. Why, as you keep talking about it, it may be the same testimony is fine. Repeat it. Keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. Guess what? The more you talk about what happened in the past, the more you are equipped <laughs> to, to get other, other, other testimonies. Now it's two. And then you talk about the two. Now you get the third one. Then you talk about the three. Then you get the fourth one. Then you talk about the fourth. Then you get the fifth one. Then you talk about the fifth one. Then you get the sixth one, the seventh one, and eighth one. Until your life is just full of the testimony of God's goodness. Never forget what God had done for you in the past. Never forget the previous deliverance. When you cried, when that child was in a fix and you cried, and God came through for you. Celebrate it. Meditate on it. Talk about it. When you had that conflict at work and God came through for you miraculously, talk about it. Think about it. Talk about it. Pre meditation on the works of God is what helps you trust that God will come through for you. If he has done it before, he will do it again. If he has done it before, he will do it again. Meditate on his works. Talk about his goodness, his deeds. And as you do that, you open the help of God. Think, let me read another scripture and I close. Psalm 143, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 143, verse 5 and 6. He says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. When you spread out your hands, is that you are drawing help. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Because I know that you are good. I, my, I, 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 I come into a state of drawing of supply. I mean a state of drawing a demand. And if there is a demand, there will be a supply. He says, I spread out my hands to you. Why? Because I've been meditating on your goodness. It causes me to draw your help. When you spread out your hand like this, you reach out like this, you are drawing help. I draw your help. My soul longs for you like a testy land. You know, when the ground is so testy, you pour water on it, the water dries up immediately. The water is drawn into the ground. You don't see it flow. Anything you pour on the ground, it draws it. Because when the land is parched, any amount of water you pour there, it just goes in. <laughs> this is what happens when you meditate on God's word, on God's goodness, on God's work in your life. It puts you in a position to draw his help. And when you put such an, an unequivocal demand for his help, help comes. It's not, you're not doubting. You are drawing the help. The faith is intense. And when faith in God is absolute, result is inevitable. So when you put yourself in a state to demand unequivocal, uncompromised help from God, it pours like water. It pours, it draws without restriction. This is where you want to be, where help flows like a river. 
I prophesy to you a new day. I prophesy to you a new season in your life. The help of God flows like a river. The help of God flows like a river. I am done tonight. God bless you. I look forward to the testimonies of God's goodness pouring in your life, even as you begin to meditate on the things that God has done for you. Meditate on past victories. Meditate on past successes. Meditate on past breakthroughs. I, he said, but I don't have a lot of it. Just name the few. Stay with the few. As you begin to meditate on the few, you, that will help you open the door for more and more and more. And your life will be a testimony. One day you will have a thousand testimonies. Another, you know, in a short while, you will become 10,000 testimonies. And as you continue in this principle, you will open a floodgate of a tsunami of God's help pouring in your life every blessed day of the year because your mind is full of the meditation on the goodness of God. I see God helping you. I see victory come. God bless you. I'll see you next week as we take this meditation forward. Good night. Bye-bye. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful, and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.